What is going on everyone? In MMORPGs, there is nothing quite as exciting as jumping into some organized chaos with other members seeking a common interest. In Nash's of Creation, the tools and activities that can be done with a guild are going to be great, so let's jump into them. In Ashes, being in a guild could enhance your experience within the game in many ways. When a player decides that they want to become a guild master and create a guild, they will set out on a quest line that must be completed. There will also be a material requirement, a monetary requirement, and a player minimum requirement which is currently 5, but this could change. So not any one person is going to be able to jump into the game from the start and decide you want to create a guild and just do so. There'll be a little work behind it. You will need to work up the materials and money for this. Once your guild is created, there will be a variety of skill options for your guild to unlock as they progress. But the bigger your guild size is, the less of these options that may be available. The current guild cap is 300 players, but if you want access to all of the skills, then you will want to keep your guild at between 30 and 50 active players. But that doesn't necessarily have to impact your guild's performance when doing large scale events such as castle sieges, because there will be a guild alliance system in the game that can increase your army size. You can be allied with a maximum of 3 guilds at a time. There is no member cap in an alliance, but there's still the guild cap, so presumably your alliance would never grow beyond 1200 players if all guilds were filled to the max. Alliances will be useful as there is minimal fast travel in the game, so if you most of your guild members are far away from your castle and it is about to be sieged, you could call upon a nearby alliance to help defend it. Alliances come with other perks as well such as resource pooling into an alliance guild bank, alliance specific quests, trade agreements, and affiliations and gear that can be obtained. We've talked about castle sieges before, when two groups fight it out to attack or defend the castle, well in the MMORPG, castle sieges will be guild versus guild. So any guild that succeeds in taking over a castle will reap in the benefits, giving them a slight jump on any guilds that may not have this, with things such as flying mounts for the officers in control of these castles. Although you can probably expect these will have specific requirements and situations built around them as flying mounts are meant to be very rare rewards for players. Other than castles, Castles, guilds will also eventually be able to unlock guild halls, which can be placed on a guild freehold plot or within nodes. These guild halls though will only house a single guild and not the attached alliances. The halls will become objective points if you go to war against another guild. Guild Wars are still in the design stage, but they are meant to be an objective based war with great risk from each side. These wars will change depending on the level of the guild, having to do events such as capturing a quest item from an opponent's freehold, or having bounties on certain players, but we will go into a lot more detail on guild wars in another video. Guilds will also have access to guild specific activities such as guild tabards, mounts, coats and bardens for your mounts, among many other rewards, so joining one will definitely be worth it when you jump into the world of Vera. What are your thoughts on guilds in Ashes of Creation? Let me know in the comments down below and if you have yet to make an account for the game, feel free to use my referral link in the description below. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.